Hi, Ian, you okay? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you, good. Um, can we start with, with Sean testing positive for COVID? Uh, yeah. How is he? Uh, how much disruption has it caused in the preparations and how much will he be involved this weekend? Well, you can imagine how he is being a patient. You know, I think he's be bouncing off the walls, as I thought, but uh, I've been in constant dialect with him. Spoke to him ten minutes ago, so he'll have a bit impact on the on the team selection, obviously, and we'll we'll have a good chat about that this afternoon when the the latest round of tests come in, and he'll be he'll be a constant right through tonight, tomorrow, and then I don't know what sort of involvement he can have on Saturday, whether he can stream the game, but I'll be surprised if there's not a phone call at half time, should we say? The FA Cup, then, how big an opportunity is this to get that winning feeling back and to? to try and build some positive momentum? Well, we'll be planning like any other, like it was a Premier League game now, all the, all the diligent you know, preparations to win a game of football. And it is important. You've got to go and win, win matches. It breeds confidence. It's old adage, but we want to be winning games and we want to get some confidence through the squad. Is it a potential banana skin, this? Because Huddersfield are, are going well, aren't they, at the top of the table? I don't think it'd be a banana skin. You know, the, the sixth unbeaten, the sixth in the league, they're going well, they're a confident side. You know, they've got a nice fluid style of play, good on the counter-attack. You know, we're going to have to be at our very best to get something out of the game, that's for sure, because they they're, they're a confident group. We've seen them three or four times. I have myself. You know, they, they look like a good outfit, you know, and the young, energetic coach who's, who gets them right up for it, and we're going to have to be at our very best. The transfer window is open, as you'll be aware. Um, Aaron Ramsey is a name that's been linked with with Burnley this week. Is there anything in that and, and how tough is it to compete with the big sides in the Premier League and all the, all the finance that is around at the minute? Yeah, our, our financial parameters are, are well known, you know, and obviously Aaron Ramsey would be a really good asset for us. We know that. He's a, he's a very talented player, but as I sit here now, it was the first I heard of it walking over the bridge from the training ground. So, yes, obviously, a player of his talent... You'd always be interested, absolutely, but it's the first I've heard of it. And just final one from me, one move that um, that looks likely to go through today is Kieran Trippier. Uh, he's, he's someone you, you'll know pretty well from his t time at Burnley. What kind of character are Newcastle getting? All right, they're getting a top, top player, you know, on and off the pitch. I think the gaffer's gone on record many times that he's his most favourite player. You know, and, and I can honestly say, hand on heart, probably the most talented player that I've had the pleasure of working with, you know, and he's, he's a he's a brilliant lad around the place, but on on the pitch, some of the things he can do with the ball is just breathtaking. He's he's a top top talent. I'm I'm surprised that no disrespect to Newcastle that someone in the top six hasn't took him. Brilliant. Thank you. All the best this weekend. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Dan Jill, BBC Radio Lancashire. Hi, Ian. Afternoon. How you doing? Okay. I'm not too bad, thank you. Um, this is a strange old situation. I've been doing this a long time. You and Sean have been at the club a long time. I think I'm right in saying this is the first time he's missed a pre-match press conference. I'm amazed. Very I'm amazed he's not walking through those doors right now, honestly. It's been ten, well, we've been together 10 years in the football sense, obviously. Um, had a year at, at Wofford, never missed a game. And we've had nine and a half years here now, never missed a game. I've missed one through COVID. This is the first time that he won't be on the side of the pitch, which is uh, not a bad record, actually, is it? Does it feel weird to not have him breathing down your neck? It's quiet. It's definitely a little bit quiet around the place, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, it'll be odd, because obviously we're, Steve Stone's not here either. Steve Stone's tested positive, so we're going to be a, a couple down on the bench. I felt a bit lonely in our office this morning. Billy Mers is a little bit under the weather, but he's, he's fine at the moment. So I was sitting there having my breakfast on my own this morning. But uh, yeah, it is, it is different not having the gaffer around because he, he is, you all know him very well now. He's, he's a huge presence, you know. His stature around the club is, is, is huge. So yeah, just, just not hearing him. You, you usually hear him before you see him, actually. So, you know, it is a, it is a big difference not having him around the place. As far as your workload's concerned then, what does that mean for preparations for the game? Obviously, there are other staff within the club, maybe working in the 23s or the academy or whatever, but is this going to be a, a real test for you because you're sitting in the office on your own doing the preparation? It's, it's been... Well, we've lost two analysts. They've gone. We've, the kit man's not here. 
two physios down, so we're, we're a little bit down to the, the bare bones, but, you know, you just do what you have to do, don't you? We're, the prep will be a little bit different. I've, I've trained today with, with 16 of the players, and, and Michael Jackson's come over from the 23s to help me out. You know, we, you know we do what Burnley do. We get it done, and we don't make excuses. It's just, just what we do. With pretty widespread COVID cases among the staff... Have you managed to keep that away from the players? You say 16 there. That's a reasonable number. It's certainly enough at the moment, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's including uh, Connor Roberts, who's you know, back on the grass for the first time this week. You know, he's, had a, he's had a bit of a tough time the last four or five weeks. So um, we, we have got a number of, of cases. You know, so it's, it's difficult the way when you're, you're picking a picking a team and you've got a team in your mind, then, you know, we'll have another round of testing tomorrow. So, you know, the, the team won't be, you know, kind of confirmed until, you know, one, two o'clock maybe tomorrow afternoon. You know, when we get all the cases back in and we know what we're playing playing with and the, and the numbers we have. Um, so it, it, it's a real unique situation at the moment that it's, it's really difficult to kind of plan. You'd, you know, I had a presentation with the lads this morning and, you, you know, you get there for the interim, you're doing exactly the same work and, diligence as you do for a Premier League game but you know that you can't be too kind of detailed because you know two or three of them not might, might not be with you at the weekend During this most recent wave for want of a better word I've sensed a determination from Sean and from Burnley that you want to try and play games and get games on if you possibly can is that still there or is there a point at which you reach where you go this is going to be too much it's going to be too big an ask No, no 100% we're, we're at no excuse uh, environment, you know, the, and that stems right from the gaffer. I think, you know, we, it's just not the way we're made. You know, we we, we want to play every game. We're not going to pull out of any games if we can play. If we've got the numbers to do it, we'll play it. There's 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 no discussion there whatsoever. So I'm I'm sure if as long as we've got the numbers on Saturday, the game's going to go ahead. We've seen a, a few managers missing games and being in contact with an earpiece or a phone or whatever with somebody on the bench. You've mentioned what Sean is like. He's like a caged animal climbing the walls. He, he really wants to be involved. Is there going to be a short straw drawn for who has to talk to him on a match day? Is someone going to be lumbered with an well, earpiece? <laughs> whoever has the earpiece in, no, he's getting it in the ear. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be a definite hotline, I'm sure there will be. I'm sure our analysts will be sorting him out um, with a live stream, so he'll know exactly what's going on. I think, you know, I think in the absence of Steve as well, Steve Stone, I think he probably would have been the, the one who would have been on the hotline. But uh, there'll be a direct line to him. I'm, I'm positive of that. Just on the FA Cup, I guess your experience is, having played in non-league football, where even playing in the FA Cup is like an exciting thing, to ultimately playing in an FA Cup final. You must have some great memories. <laughs> Yeah, great memories, but we still got beat, so it's it's always tarnished a little bit. But no, no, the, the experience of 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 a FA Cup final is is something that you can you know take away with you forever. It was incredible. It was you know it was my I think it was my twelfth professional game coming out of non-league. You know the the seventh game was the semi-final against West Ham. I think it was four 0 and then the twelfth game was the FA Cup final. So it kind of happened a little bit quicker than expected, but it's. The FA Cup in my house, growing up with my mum and dad, was just a huge occasion. Of the FA Cup final, then the whole neighbourhood stopped. So it, it always holds a really good place in my heart, the FA Cup. And it's a competition you always want to progress in, always, you know, and do well in. Do you think that's why we still love it, even though the landscape has changed? The idea that you can play in the extra preliminary round for a non-league team one season and then you can be a pro and you can play in round four, five, six, whatever next season? Yeah, I just, I think it's just, part of the fabric of English football I really do I just it, it, it pains me to see people kind of dismissing it as, a, as you know it's not really that important it's you know it's the way I've been brought up and I know Sean's the same I should call him the gaffer he'll probably give me a telling off for that but no I think it, it's an important part of us growing up the FA Cup it always was you know we got to hold on to that because you don't want to lose lose the FA Cup because that's that's as I said part of the fabric of English football I suppose given the Premier League situation and how lucrative it is, you've got to be realistic about the priorities and, and you do need to stay in the Premier League. But can winning an FA Cup tie, particularly this weekend, actually have a really positive impact going into Premier League games? Well, winning football matches always breeds confidence. 
you know, and you know we're not we're shying away from the fact that we're a little bit short on that at the moment. And so any sort of positive, although you wouldn't you're watching the lads in training, the way that they're behaving and the way they're training is, is top draw. You know, really confident the way they're going about the business. But winning the game of football, you know, is there's no negative to that. So we'll be doing everything we can with our stronger side out on Saturday, wherever we can, to win a game of football. Huddersfield clearly going really well in the championship. You've got your own documented problems with personnel and, and the staff. How big is that jump between championship and Premier League football? And will those factors very much level things out in this game? You know, that you, you don't get to sixth in the, in the championship at this stage of the season by luck. You know, the games with Watch a really organised squad, you know, that... The way they play, very fluid. You know, they can they can switch between a back three to a back four within within the game. You know, they they counter attack quick and they look a really good outfit. Uh, I don't know if my old team, well not team, we had Jonathan Hogg at Watford. I think he might be coming back into the captain there, and he's he's a top player. And, and the gap wise, you know, if you're in the top six of the championship and you're to the bottom half of the of the Premier League, I think you know there's. You know, it, there is a gap, obviously, because of the financial situation. But you know, I think they could probably compete. I think for sure. I don't think that the steps are that huge. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Brilliant. All the best. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Doug.